Our next two speakers are going to talk about a novel data set that has recently become available to researchers and users of Google Earth Engine. The data are high resolution, deep time series, tropical forest based maps made available by a unique partnership, including the Kongsberg Satellite Services, Planet and Airbus, funded by Norway's Ministry of Climate and Environment. We're gonna to hear today about the data as well as some of the first applications of the data for forest monitoring. It's my pleasure to welcome Tara O'Shea, Director of Forest Programs at Planet Labs to tell us more. Welcome Tara. Thank you, Tanya, excited to be here. And thank you everyone for joining. I'm excited to share more about the NICFI Satellite Data Program. Reminder that if you have any questions, please do throw them into the chat where I'm joined by my colleague, Sam Roy. Uh, so a high level agenda of what I'm going to talk about today, I'm going to share a bit more about Planet's data sets and the NICFI satellite data program itself. I'm also excited to share a bit more about the program's impact to date and the new partnership and solution with Google Earth Engine. So for those who are not familiar with Planet, I tend to say that we have a bit of a mantra and it's that you can't fix what you can't see. And we really think this is at the root of many of our climate and sustainability crises. And it's the small piece of the puzzle that we are trying to help solve by making global change visible, accessible, and actionable. We do this by deploying the largest constellation of Earth observing satellites in human history. Um, but most of these satellites are really quite small. So what you see here is an illustration of our Dove constellation. This is over 100 small satellites in a sun synchronous orbit, such that as the Earth rotates underneath them, they image the same place at the same time every day at about three and a half meters per pixel. This is complemented by our SkySat constellation, which is a tasked system. So you tell the satellite where to look, um, but it can image at 50 centimeters per pixel. So the two in combination really provide a pretty unprecedented Earth observation data set. Um, and as you can imagine, many users uh, do use the two in tandem to monitor for change and then zoom in when it occurs. So what do all these new Earth observation technologies mean uh, for tropical forest monitoring in particular? Well, I think we're very fortunate in some ways in the forest and climate community because we have had Earth observation satell satellites informing our understanding of land cover and land use change for decades. And this is largely thanks to the Landsat mission, which of course has been flying since the 1970s and just launched Landsat 9 about two weeks ago, which, which we were all very excited to see. And what Planet is bringing to the table is a new data set that complements these missions with higher spatial and temporal resolution information. So again, that sub five meter per pixel, at a daily cadence, which in the tropics is really important uh, to have that revisit and see through the clouds. So what the NICFI data program and what the mandate of the NICFI data program does is for the first time, it makes this high resolution satellite monitoring of the tropics available in a wall-to-wall -wall way to everyone working to reduce and reverse tropical forest loss. Um, so this is really unique, not only because of the high resolution, but also because it's available across the full tropics and across all sectors. For those who are not familiar with the NICFI data program, as Tanya mentioned in her introduction, this is an initiative of the Norwegian Ministry of Climate and Environment, which awarded an international contract to Kongsberg Satellite Services who in partnership with Planet and Airbus has been providing the comprehensive access to these high resolution uh, tropical forest monitoring assets. The goal of the NICFI data program is to advance the NICFI mission. So to leverage the high resolution data to reduce and reverse the loss of tropical forests, contributing to combating climate change conserving biodiversity, 
and facilitating sustainable development. I want to take a moment and just share a bit more information about the different data products and access levels available through this program. It was really designed to enable a suite of applications and use cases um, from technical to non-technical. Um, our goal is to support everyone in their work uh, towards the NICFI purpose. Uh, so first is what we call lev level zero. And this is a visual base map product. So it's really optimized for visual display and interpretation. And this is available to everyone through our purpose allies, such as Global Forest Watch. Level one is the four band analysis ready base map. Uh, so this data product is optimized for land based analyses. And it is available to anyone under a CC NC alike license in support of the NICFI purpose. And at this level, users have the ability to download, stream, and make derivative products. And you can see here, this is the level that has you know, a wide array of users. And I'm excited to share a bit more about what we are seeing and learning from them in a minute. And finally, level two, this is scenes level data. Um, it is available to a select number of users that are awarded by the Norwegian Ministry. This involves the scenes, the planet scenes that go into the base maps, as well as the Airbus archive scenes, which date back to 2002. And lastly, we also have a number of outreach partners, uh, cloud platform and compute partners that are helping all of the users in this program really make the most of this data towards our shared conservation and climate goals. Um, and again, in particular, I'm really excited to share more today and hear uh, from our users today about the new solution available in Google Earth Engine. Really quickly, I, I just wanna to touch on, there are two time periods to the data program. So there is the archive term uh, beginning in late 2015. And this is a biannual or twice a year base map available of the full tropics. And then there's the monitoring term. And this begins in September 2020, and it is a monthly cadence. So every month of the data program, the full tropics is updated in high resolution for all of the program's participants. So what does this really mean in practice? Um, again, I just want to reiterate that this is the first time we not only have had the full tropics in high resolution, but we also have universal access to that high resolution information. And so what we as a program team really hope and are excited about for this program is what you all as the downstream users with your own areas of expertise um, can do with the data and the sorts of uh, innovation and solutions that are going to come. So briefly, I just wanted to let you all know where you can find out more. Um, you can sign up at planet.com slash NICFI. There's also a suite of technical resources available in the Planet Developer Center. And you can also access a user help desk through our partner KSAT shown here on the screen. So I mentioned earlier that the program is actually now a year old, which is hard to believe, but I'm really excited to share a little bit more on the impact to date and what we're learning from users. Um, as of yesterday, I believe we hit 9,000 users registered from over 130 countries. Um, this is really exciting. We're seeing that almost two thirds of the base map selections on Global Forest Watch are now these NICFI base maps. That number is growing by 25% each quarter. We've been able to collect over 300 user stories from all of you, our user community, and we'd love to hear from you. So please keep them coming. Speaking of which, I know we're going to hear from users today throughout the summit, so I'll keep this brief, but I did wanna showcase just a few of the user stories that we're seeing from the field. Um, this is an example from the Central African Forest Initiative, which is bringing together the six Congo Basin countries to support their work in conserving the Congo Basin. They are putting the level one mosaic data to work, not only to detect deforestation degradation, 
which is often a precursor to outright deforestation, um, but they're also finding it extremely useful in classifying the drivers of deforestation um, and using that to inform their sustainable land use planning. I also wanted to show this example from the government of Mozambique. Um, what you see on the left is their annual forest area change reporting. And on the right is how they're using the planet data to validate and quantify that change. And I should note that the platform that they're doing this in is the CEPL platform, which is administered by FAO and powered by Google Earth Engine. And so that's actually a really great segue to uh, the partnership that I'm, I'm very excited to talk about here today. And that is having these NICFI planet-based maps available within Google Earth Engine for users to use. Um, so I think as I've you know, said throughout the talk, we're so excited about the comprehensive access to high resolution monitoring. It's the first time we have the full tropics wall to wall in high res. And now through Google Earth Engine, we're bringing the power of that cloud-based uh, compute, having that hosted cloud compute to that high resolution data. Um, and so it can really bring the power of time series analyses um, to this, this new resource across the tropics. And what you see here is an illustration of those monthly composites uh, as a time series within Earth Engine. And this has been available to users for uh, several weeks now. And we've been really just so impressed to see what our shared users are able to do with it. Um, what you see here is an example from the forestry department at the FAO, uh, who using the standard land trender al algorithm already within or, or on top of Earth Engine, pulling the high resolution base maps, which are now available as um, an Earth Engine asset within the catalog. And just by combining these two things, for the first time we have an automated change detection of land cover changes in a wall-to-wall, -wall, high resolution way. And it's just been incredible to see the outputs, even without much tailoring of, of the algorithms to the new data set, you suddenly have these high resolution outputs that can see things like degradation, that can see things like drivers of deforestation, um, and we know that this is just the beginning, and we're so excited to see what you as a user community uh, continue to do with the combination of this high resolution monitoring and this cloud compute, hosted cloud compute uh, capability that is made available through this unique uh, public and private partnership within the NICFI data program. And so with that, um, thank you all for your time. I hope that uh, you take some time to ask questions in the chat and join us at planet.com slash Thank you to the Geo for Good team. Our next speaker is Julian Fox, team leader, National Forest Monitoring at UNFAO, to tell us more about CIPAL, a platform that countries use to monitor and report on forests and land use. Julian, the virtual stage is yours. Thank you so much, Tanya. Uh, dear colleagues and partners, it has been said that we have entered the golden age of remote sensing. This is true. At no time ever in our past has there been more data available about the Earth's surface. Our challenge now is how to make the best use of these data to improve life on Earth. There are the invaluable public sources of geospatial data, the 40 nine-year archive of US Landsat observations and its continuity with the recently launched Landsat 9, the European Space Agency's Copernicus program and especially their Sentinel-1 and Sentinel-2 satellites. These data sources provide an incredibly rich resource for helping to determine the status and trend of a myriad of Earth systems vital to healthy ecosystems and human lives. New sources of data, such as from Planet, augment existing data and provide amazing temporal and spatial detail, imaging nearly the entire land surface of the Earth every day with a pixel size of less than four meters. The opportunity to add this incredible data source to our existing data and platforms for monitoring the Earth's Earth surface is a windfall for the community and will no doubt serve as a catalyst for an entirely new level of analysis. 
Thanks to the creativity, vision, and foresight of NICFI, anyone anywhere in the world now has free access to these data, and we in FAO are honoured to help facilitate this access. FAO has a long history of monitoring and reporting on the status and trend of the Earth's surface and how it relates to agriculture, forestry and fisheries. Platforms for land monitoring developed by FAO help turn the huge amount of data available into information that can be used to make better decisions about the management of Earth's natural resources. FAO has integrated planet data into the open forests set of forest and land monitoring tools. We have worked particularly hard to integrate the new data into our CEPAL cloud computing platform that has over 7,000 active users in 130 countries. This has facilitated the distribution and use of the data directly into national ministries of FAO member states. This will improve analysis to be carried out locally where decisions are made. Specifically, the data made available through the NICVI Planet Agreement has already been used in F by FAO in an operational sense to help countries report to the UNFCCC, improving their forest data and statistics, in some cases, enabling analysis that were not possible before, and for many countries, improving the accuracy and transparency of their forest data, helping countries determine the underlying drivers of deforestation and degradation thereby helping them create policies to address these drivers, improving the detection and monitoring of finer scale changes to the Earth's surface, like forest degradation and regeneration, enabling near real-time assessment of forest and land cover change due to fire and other causes, improving the delineation and monitoring of agriculture, and detecting changes in hard to detect carbon rich ecosystems such as peatlands and mangroves, and many more. In Central Africa, FAO supports six countries to map recent deforestation and degradation from 2015 to 2020, using CEPAL to assess direct drivers related to these disturbances. PLANET has been particularly helpful in the national context of cent Central Africa, where persistent cloud cover often prevents reliable and consistent interpretation of images in order to determine whether and how changes in forest, land cover and use have occurred at each region. Across the forests of the Lower Mekong region, it is generally difficult to identify timber that has been extracted legally and sustainably. Under the UN RED program, FAO is developing a near real-time monitoring system powered by the CEPAL platform that can be used by the countries in the region to regularly track forest operations and take preventative action against illegal and unsustainable activity. In Peru, the Ministry of Environment and Forest and Wildlife Service are receiving support from FAO to prepare its second forest reference emission level for the Amazon region. Peru took advantage of the new high resolution imagery from PLANET to improve its estimates of deforestation activities from 2007 to 2019. One of the great advantages of the PLANET imagery is that it not only offers cloud-free composite mosaics, but it also provides the dates associated with these images, giving the country relevant information to analyze forest and land use cover changes. As we can see from these examples, all these applications can have a direct impact on slowing and mitigating the effects of climate change. Experimentally, FAO is using the data across many program areas to see how the data can improve the ongoing work of FAO anywhere satellite imagery is part of these efforts. Thank you to NICFI for making this investment in high resolution, high cadence imagery and for making the data freely available to the community. Thank you also to NICFI for providing finance to CEPAL Phase 2, which I'm delighted to be able to announce today. CEPAL Phase 2, Forest and Land Monitoring for Climate Action, is launched today with a $10 million grant from NICFI. This will allow us to expand the use and application of the NICFI Planet data and also allow us to continue to develop the CEPAL platform to be even easier to use for critical forest and land monitoring needs. In CEPAL Phase 2, we will apply innovative capacity development methods 
to reach all 64 countries included in the NICFI Planet Data Program toward autonomous use of the data for key forest and land monitoring needs. We will develop user-friendly applications of the NICFI Planet Data in CEPAL Modules 4, improving the integrity of activity data for jurisdictional and national MRV reporting, strengthening national forest monitoring systems, strengthening the monitoring of forest and ecosystem restoration, improving the measurement and monitoring of peatlands and mangroves, strengthening early warning systems and applications such as the monitoring of fire and fire risk, and strengthening agricultural monitoring toward integration of geospatial data for forests and agriculture. For specific countries, country-level engagement and support will lead to institutionalization of the NICFI Planet data at the national level strengthening institutional arrangements and linking directly to policy formulation. Thank you again to NICFI for making this possible. And thank you to all the partners and all 7,000 active users who are engaging with the platform. We also invite additional contributions from technical and financial partners for this important work. We at FAO are certain that the investment made by NICFI will prove its worth. In terms of impact, FAO looks forward to being on the cutting edge of these applications and creating true impact from this incredible resource moving forward. For many years, a lack of information has been blamed for making poor decisions. Now, thanks to the investments of national space agencies and those of the NICFI Planet Data Program, it is not, or should not be, a limiting factor. It is our task then to support countries in accessing and using these data to make the world a better place. Thank you, Tanya, and back to you. Thank you, Julian, and so much congratulations on CPOL phase two, that's fantastic. To recap, we've heard about the Planet, Planet and NICFI high resolution deep time series tropical forest base maps, where monthly and biannual mosaics are now an earth engine. We've also heard how FAO's CEPAL platform makes use of the data to help countries monitor forest regrowth and restoration and reduce the loss of tropical forests. Thanks again to Tara and Julian for joining us today.